Hello everyone, and um, I'm just doing a quick update here on my Katinga, which she's over on her back at the moment. I'm finishing up my final putty work on the nacelles, and um, I've just got them all puttied up and smoothed out. Doing a little bit more sanding work on it, but um, it's very smooth to the touch. So I've got this one done, um, and I've done the insides joint lines here. Now on every one of these I've built and I've seen this never seems to um, fit perfectly here nor does it on the top side so you always have to do some putty work on these. So what I've done is I filled those in and wiped it down with a q-tip uh, soaked in um, acetone to pull the putty off. That's a, um, a little trick that I learned from from a friend of mine, uh, Trek Works Boyd, um, he was demonstrating how to do that in the past, and that works really good. If you're not uh, subscribed to his channel, you really should be because he's absolutely one of the best modelers I've ever seen, and does a fantastic job on all of his builds, and does a lot of great tips and, and techniques. So I've got just a little bit more cleanup uh, right here on this, but this joint line is in very uh, very good shape and um, the one on the opposite side is almost completely done. I have a little bit more putty to put there but in a little more cleanup but it's almost finished and will be um, should be just fine. I've also done some putty work up here around the bulb. Um, need to do a little bit more sanding here where this comes together on that side and right there which has also been cleaned up and it's set really good I just want to do a little quick sanding just to make sure it's really good and smooth one of the things that I've been using on this um, build in relation to sanding are these little sanding pads uh, they're really nice to get in close into things and get uh, get tight and uh, with the stiff cardboard on, board on them it really uh, does help on sanding things out so I've got to do a little bit of putty here on this nacelle. This, uh, the plastic actually went together perfectly here. There's very little of a, of a problem. So I'll do a little bit there. Turn it around here. Do a little bit here, not much, um, and sand that down. And this, uh, this nacelle will be done here. I've also been working on the tops of the nacelles. And on the pylons as well, um, getting those uh, filled and sanded out. So should be done with that shortly and uh, those will be done and I'll probably go ahead and put some paint on that. Well while some more of this um, putty work sets up so I can do some a little bit more sanding, some stuff that I worked back over again because I was like ah there's a slight little ridge there so let me work on it some more. Um, most people probably would let it go but I end up becoming a fanatical nut about stuff and I probably mess with it more than what I should but overall everything's in good shape I have a little bit more sanding to do and um, now it's time to start thinking about some more resin parts and I have these which I showed early on in this build um, and these are the disruptor parts let me get everything out and uh, let me pull the little card out of the plastic envelope here um, the Katinga Konos 1 disruptors and um, this shows um, them actually on the studio model these are photos of the studio model, model. here's an up close shot here's one disruptor here and here these are on the underside of the hull and actually go up in this area one on each side and um, there should be yeah, it gives instructions on how to do that there's some wire here and they give you a little pattern on how to bend it um, these are the parts so these have been pre-primed um, so I need to go ahead and see about working with these and 
get ready to install these on the underside so I'm going to have to deal with this wire detail here um, so I'll have to follow that pattern so let me go ahead and see what I need to do about that and show that process or at least get it done and show you what they're going to look like okay let's see now now the earlier uh, shot I showed more parts than what's necessary I showed you some parts that were um, I, I won't be using on this build um, they're not disruptors these are the disruptors and these here which go on the underside of the hull and these right here which are detail parts which go on the top of the um, engineering hull up by the manifolds and I don't know if I can get this close enough for the camera to focus on but they are uh, nicely detailed little resin pieces these obviously are much larger and uh, what happens with these is the metal little brass rod that has to get bent gets put into this location right here and then you bend this side and this side to match this template right here so it'll end up looking like that. So let me go ahead and get some tools and I'll go ahead and see about bending both these rods um, hopefully at the same time maybe so I can get them identical to each other. So to measure these off I'm going to put them together and I'm going to hold them right here along this line and line them up with each other and put them right there well, I'm going to do this one at a time put it right there and then when it comes up to this access point right there right in line on top I'm going to put a piece of masking tape on that and wrap that over so I know that that's the distance I need to that's the distance I need in relation to the bend for that piece so I'm going to take this tool and I'm going to grab a hold of it right there at that point and I'm going to hold it stiff I'm going to bend this around like so. So I've got it like that. And I'm going to come back down here and check it. And that's pretty much spot on right off the bat. Boy, that worked out like a little miracle. I never would have expected that. Just a slight bit more bend, and I can do that manually. And that worked out pretty perfectly. So, now that I have this right there, I see where I need to bend it again. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to bend it again, and I'll probably be off camera bending it. So forgive me for that. I've started my bend and I want to check it. Yep, that's in the right, pretty much the right place. So now I'm going to go ahead and complete the bend. And let me put it down here and see what we've got. And that pretty much lines up perfectly with pattern. So there we go. So all I have to do is trim this side and I'll have it perfect. So let me pull off the tape which is easier said than done because this is 3M uh, vinyl automotive masking tape and it sticks quite nicely onto itself. Um, so let me get a... and now we can look at that and see line it up there and see that you know that's almost spot on I need to adjust this side here a little bit more inward so let me bend it in a little more 
and as you can see that pretty much fits the pattern perfectly so I think that one will be good to go so now I'll go ahead and do the um, do the other one to match this okay here's one of them uh, the other one's still setting up with the CA so I don't want to pick it up yet until it uh, it sets up because I'm using a gel CA and it takes it a little uh, it takes it longer to set up than than normal thin CA. So there it is on there and it's bent in place and everything. Looks um, pretty close to the um, examples. So next thing to do is going to be to glue this one and its twin onto the underside of the hull. Well here you can see them on the underside of the studio model, the one on the left and right side there. So that's where they need to go and exactly how they need to be placed. It's interesting that the detail on the underside of the AMT kit's not quite the same, but that's to be expected. So let's go ahead and see what we need to do about uh, lining those up. So I placed them on the model at that location because on the studio model they are forward and they come right up to the edge um, and they're in line with the curved bulkhead so the issue is is just getting them lined up be pretty much the same on both sides and I think that pretty much has it. Uh, I forgot I still need to fill this in. But I think I'll go ahead and see that CA those in right there at that location. Those look pretty good. Well, there they are glued in and in place. I'm going to let them sit there for a few minutes because I did uh, glue these in with gel CA. And I spraying them with any type of kicker or whatever it really isn't going to make a, much of a difference with all that on the underside. But there those parts are. Now the next thing I'm going to do um, is I want to see about installing these Katinga engine grills from JT Graphics, which I've shown on my review of all the resin parts and everything that I've used from JT Graphics. These are photo etch parts, and uh, they also come with some decals. And let me um, open this up and show you what that looks like. And this is the photo etch right here, which have these very nice grills. And you get two sets of decals, one in blue and one in orange, orangey red, which I'm not going to be using. These grills pieces get folded over and they get they go on the back of this part here at this location on uh, this location on the impulse engines and the instructions call for for you either to use them uh, folded or you can cut this um, this bottom uh, section off and just use the grill section on top um, if you have any problems folding it I'm going to fold them and if you look real closely if we can see this I don't know if the camera is going to show it, but there is a scoring fold line on the part right at right along here. So you fold these over and make them as one piece, and then you um, put those on right here on this side, on the other side, and um, that's where they go. So I'm looking forward to to putting those on I think that will um, really add really nice to this piece I am going to install some dental acrylic on these first and then I will um, put those parts on uh, after but before then I'm going to have to paint this back bulkhead and paint the photo etch after I get it folded uh, and then put the dental acrylic in these and then install the photo etch on top using some CA. And I need to go and look at the studio model and see if I should put the dental acrylic in flush with the surface of this part right here or if I should actually put it at 
deeper inside the part. I'm going to have to go see which will look better and I'll need to compare the studio model and see if I can get some photo references that may give me a clue on what may look best to, to do for that. I've got the part completely painted now and I'm using the paint which I'll talk about um, probably later in this build video or in the next build video because this is just outstanding paint and I want to share it with you. But what I've done is I've taped off the back of these and I'm going to fill these with dental acrylic. Um, well, not, not completely all the way up, but just enough to fill the back side of these because I've checked studio references and there was some uh, space between the whatever the uh, diffusion material was and the front of this of these um, ports. So I'm going to put some dental acrylic in there um, so I can have some good light diffusion material. Also in the torque tube, the torpedo tube, I originally had done this in dental acrylic and uh, should not have done that because I needed to paint it. Uh, just wasn't thinking. So what I did was I removed the dental acrylic with drilling it out and now I'm going to put that back. So I use dental acrylic um, polymer and it comes in powders that you can get in 11 ounces in larger sizes from Berman Industries out of California. It's a two-part system. The dental acrylic powder, which is a white powder for what I'm using. You can also get it in uh, flesh tones, I believe, um, which obviously you would not want to use for model making, uh, for model purposes. And then you have to put in a liquid um, that let causes it to set up, and that's also from Berman Industries. Dental acrylic monomer. Um, that you just drizzle in and it causes the uh, powder to turn hard and works out to be a really good diffusion material. Well, it's set up now and as you can see it's pretty clear because you can still see the blue in there. So let's peel this side back and take a look at it and see if I've got it covered. See how there's a little bit of gap right up there on the top because this piece is slanted. I should have propped it up level. But the translucency is really nice. I'm happy with that. So I'll just put a little bit more in there um, and do it again. That's one thing nice about dental acrylic is you don't have to get it all in one shot. You can add layers of dental acrylic and it still works fine. That turned out really well. I won't have to worry about doing any more on that side. Let's check the other side out. Oh yeah, and that side turned out perfectly fine too. Nice, hard, and solid piece. And that should look really good. <coughs> Let me um, turn the model around. And you can see how that glows really nice. It doesn't even have the bulkhead on top, so we're getting a lot of light contamination. <coughs> Excuse me, but that glows really well so all I need to do is add a little bit more onto this one and on um, this side and it'll be fine so let me go ahead and get that done and this piece will be finished and ready to be installed so we can get moving on this well that's set up now so let me go ahead and remove the tape uh, and um, there it is so that should be ready so now I'll be able to go ahead and glue that onto the back of the bulkhead